Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today I'm gonna show y'all my top 10 phones in order. Now before we get started, there's a little disclaimer, three things I wanna talk about real quick. Number one, now there's a lot of people that's new to my channel so they might not know this, but I've been on YouTube for about 10 years and in the space of that 10 years, I never got paid one penny to make a phone review. Now I don't care if we're talking about Motorola, HTC, LG, OnePlus, Apple, Google, I never got paid one cent to make a phone review. So if I say I like something, that means I really like it, and if I say I don't like something, that means I genuinely don't like it. Now y'all should know my motto by now, I only pledge allegiance to the hotness. Number two, let me explain to you what I mean by my favorite phone. When I say my favorite phone, that means my favorite phone as of today. Not three days ago, not three weeks ago, not last year, as of today. Now, y'all gotta realize, phones are constantly changing. If I tell you the Galaxy S8 is my favorite phone, then two weeks from now, it starts to lag, it starts catching bugs, the battery starts draining faster, I'm gonna pick up another phone, and that new phone is gonna be my favorite phone. Phones are constantly changing, no phone is gonna be my favorite forever. And lastly, we just talking about phones. All right, some of y'all need to relax and stop getting so emotional. Stop sending me messages talking about you unsubscribing and you unfollowing me and all of that. I'm not talking about your firstborn kid. I ain't dissing your moms. I ain't talking about religion and politics. This is just phones. Everybody's welcome to their opinion. These are my opinions. All right, so let's get right into it. Shout out to White Shoes, back in the building. All right, so as of today, my new favorite phone, one on the list, is the Google Pixel 2 XL. This is my new favorite phone. This is a major heavy hitter right here. Now, what I'll do is I'll talk about the phones real quick. This ain't a review. All of these phones that you're going to see in this video, I already reviewed. Y'all know all the pros and cons. I'll just give you an idea of why I'm saying this is my favorite phone. I did, I, and I'll tell you some quick pros and cons. The reason I say the Pixel 2 XL is my favorite phone. This is a lag-free workhorse beast. All right, this is a monster right here. Not to mention... You got one of the best cameras, if not the best camera on any Android phone. Now we could debate that. But you got one of the top three cameras. You got dual speakers on the front. Now you got that blue tint on the display. I ain't really worried about that. Like I said, you get used to that. But the best part about this phone is no lag. No lag, no hiccups, no stutters. You can have 100 apps open at the same time. You got excellent battery life. This is a shit shower and shave phone. You got quick charge. This is my workhorse phone. Now, nine times out of ten during the day when I'm on the phone, I'm doing work-related stuff. I'm not just sitting around on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. All right, let me stop lying. I'll be on, I, I do be on social media a lot too, but, but I do use this phone for work purposes. So a lot of times I got spreadsheets open. I'm doing Skype calls. I'm getting 101 emails. I'm responding to messages. This phone has no lag, no stutter, and no hiccups. Now, when I am on my social media savagery, you got the dual speakers on the front, so when I'm watching my videos, it just sounds dope. All right, so this phone right here, this is a major heavy hitter. This is my new favorite phone. Let's get into number two. Now, if y'all got any questions or comments, leave them, uh, leave them in the comment section. I'll talk about them on my next stream. I'm trying to make this quick. Number two, Galaxy Note 8. Now, this used to be my favorite phone, but unfortunately, with my Galaxy Note 8, I'm having a little bit of hiccups and a little bit of problems with this phone. Now, I wouldn't say major lag, but I do get occasional lag. All right, so let's clear off all the notifications. All right, so it's working good right now. Now, let me just address something real quick before I even talk more about this Galaxy Note 8. When I did the OnePlus video the other day, I got the same comment over and over and over. Why don't you make a video showing the Galaxy Note 8 lagging if you're having so many problems? Well, let me explain to you why I'm not doing that. If I was able to just pull out this phone right now and show you some lag on it, that would mean that this phone is completely trash. The point about this phone when I mentioned lag is the lag happens when you don't expect it or when you or when you don't really need it. So when I'm in the elevator and I just pull out the note and I really want to do something real quick, then I might get a little bit of lag. Sometimes I pull out the phone, I hit the iris sensor, it won't open. Sometimes I hit the fingerprint sensor, it'll freeze up a little. Now I just reset this phone, so it should be running smooth. Let's let's check the uh, optimization real quick. Mm -hmm. You got your performance. Now I rock this on maximum performance. Now keep in mind, again, on a side note, these are stock phones. I, I'm, I'm talking about stock settings. All right, we got it 100% optimized. We're talking about stock settings. Now there's, of course, there's other ways you can get into your phone and make it not lag. 
You could go to your transitions, turn all that stuff down, download a different uh, launcher. There's a whole bunch of things that you could do, but I'm talking about from layman's terms, just stock right out of the box, using it like it's supposed to be used, max brightness, max everything. This phone is pound for pound. Now look, we talk now look, I just told y'all the Pixel 2 XL is my favorite phone, but pound for pound, the Galaxy Note 8, this is the best phone of the year. Now you got all of the features, you got wireless charge, it's water resistant, expandable memory, you got your always on display, which is functional. All right, functional always on display. You got a headphone jack. This phone pretty much does everything that you could do. And not to mention the S Pen. That's why this is still my in my top three, the S Pen. I use this every day when I'm getting into my Facebook race wars. Y'all know how that go. I got my memes on deck, S Pen ready. All right, so this phone right here, the Galaxy Note 8, this is definitely the best phone of the year, but it's number two on my list only because I'm having a little bit of hiccups here and there. And for me, I don't got time for no hiccups when I'm doing work stuff. All right, now I'm giving you this as a work perspective. When I'm doing work stuff and I'm, you know, I'm heavy hitting on the phone, I don't got time for lag. Now I'm not saying this phone got major lag, but this phone does have a little bit of hiccups here and there, but I'm still giving it the number two spot. Galaxy Note 8 is a heavy hitter. Let's take it over to number three. Number three, iPhone 10. All right, now, this, this is the best iPhone that's out right now. It got the best display. This is the most trendiest phone. This phone is a heavy hitter. The camera is crazy. Battery life is a little suspect. Battery life is a little suspect on this, but this is the trendy phone. When I hit Starbucks and I pull out my MacBook and I'm in douchebag mode, gotta pull out my iPhone 10. I wanna be in, I wanna be in the game like everybody else. Who, nothing wrong with that. But all jokes aside, this is a heavy hitter. The facial unlock is a major go. Now, let me talk about what I don't like about this phone real quick. I just said it. The facial unlock, there's no fingerprint sensor. So the problem I have with this phone, when I got it in my car and it's on my car charger and I want to, I want to check out some information, I got to swipe, I got to put in my passcode to get it. I can't, you can't drive and look at the phone. Now, shout out to my brother. I was hanging out with him the other day. He had it, I'm sitting in the passenger seat. He got his iPhone 10 right in the middle. And every time he keeps trying to look over and unlock the screen, I'm like, bro, just give me the passcode before you fuck around and crash. I right, stop doing that. So I would have liked to have a fingerprint sensor on the back of this phone. But other than that, the camera on this is amazing. The display is, a, this, the display is, this is the best iPhone display yet. And not to mention, it's an iPhone. If you like Apple, this is the phone that you want to get. Number, uh, where we at? Number four? All right, number four on the list. Here we go. Number four on the list, LG V30. Now, if I was doing phone awards, this phone would have won the award for the most improved phone from last year's model. Now, if you had an LG V20, then you upgraded to an LG V30. It's like night and day. It's like two totally different phones. All right, so LG V30, what can I say about this phone? You got the quad deck. The, the, when you're playing music through this phone, through wired headphones, it sounds amazing. So far, now I'm surprised. I thought this phone was going to start lagging after a while. Not too much lag on this. I get a little hiccup here and there, but not too much. You got wireless charge. It's water resistant. This is a major go right here, especially the video camera on this. The audio sounds great. This is a heavy hitter. Now, like I said, this ain't a review. I'm not going to get into all of my pros and cons. I already did that. I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna go off the top of the head. All right, so that's number four. Let's get into number five. Now this is gonna shock y'all. Number five on my list, Moto Z Force Two. This might be now. Like I said, if I was doing awards, this would be the most underrated phone of the year. Now part of the problem is the price of this phone and the price of the mods. Nobody really trying to pay all that bread when you got all these other heavy hitters on the deck. This phone right here though, this is such a major phone. On the back right now, you still got the wireless charge mod. No lag on this phone. All right, still running smooth, just like out of the box. It's pretty much stock. The camera's pretty good. Battery life on this is decent. But the best part about this phone is the Moto mods. Now, let me show you the mods that I use heavy. First of all, the projector mod. If you got a Moto Z2 and the projector mod, nobody ain't touching you. I, you are definitely James Bond on the scene. When I was at this little fight party the other night, I had the, um, I had the moto projector on the ceiling. I'm going through my emails. Everybody wanted to know what phone is that. Nobody, and the thing is, this is not even some mysterious phone, but nobody knew what it was. Zerks, chill out. All right, chill out, Zerks. Zerks want the, the 360 mod. 360 camera mod. Now, I don't really use this one that much. I got to keep it real. I don't use that one, that one that much. You got your style mods. 
battery mod. I use this one every day. It's like having two phones. And the, and the second best mod behind the projector is the sound boost. If you got the Moto Z and you got the sound boost, you are winning. You notice I had to take it to the high voice just now? You are definitely winning if you got this combination. Every time I pull this out, everybody wants to know where did I buy that Bluetooth speaker from? Not a Bluetooth speaker, it's a Moto mod. And it works. Uh, you, um, I'm going to say uh, you charge this up separately So you don't have to charge it up on your phone You can charge it up separately Alright, so that's my top 5 phones right here Now, let's get into 6 through 10 Number 6 on the list HTC U11 Let me open this one up Now, I haven't used this one in about a minute HTC U11 <sighs> Look at the back Let me take this case off real quick, why not If I had to give an award for this phone most beautiful phone of the year. Let's get a wipe down real quick. Look at this. Woo. This, the, every time I see this phone, I get that feeling. Woo. This is still the most beautiful phone of the year. You still got your fingerprint sensor on the front. I love that. All right, that's a dying breed. Fingerprint sensor still on the front. HTC Sense, no lag on this one. All right, so it's still running nice and smooth. Dual speakers. All right, the speakers on this one sound great. This has quick charge. I mean, this is the camera on this phone. The camera's amazing. Y'all remember when you do the video with the zoom in and you zoom the audio? This is still a major go. Now, a lot of people was asking me, am I getting the HTC U11 Plus? I might try to pick one of those up, but um, I don't really see a need to get that one. I might as well wait till the next gen HTC comes out. But this is definitely in the top 10. This could have easily been number five if it wasn't for the Moto Mods. But it is what it is. All right, so that's number five on the list. All right, let's push these up so you can see them. All right, let's get to number six. Now, number six, we got the Huawei Mate 10 Pro with thought protection. Now, this could this would have been runner up for the most beautiful phone in the year. Let me wipe this one down. Whew, this is another one. This phone is beautiful. Now, a lot of people was asking me why didn't I do the full review on this one? And I gotta be honest with y'all, this is a review unit. So my review unit that I got, let me open this one up. My review unit that I got, I'm having a little bit of stutters with this, a little bit too much lag. All right, when I'm switching from, uh, when I'm switching my thought protection, it's lagging out like crazy. And this was a pre-production model, so I didn't want to do a full review on something that's not retail. Now, I was at my homeboy's house the other day. He got a retail version. I was playing around with it. I didn't see any of them same problems I was seeing on this one. So I'm choking that off to uh, review unit status. But this phone, the build quality is excellent. The battery is ridiculous. It's not quad HD display. It is what it is. Nice and smooth when it's not lagging, <laughs> nice and smooth. But the best part about this phone is the thought protection and the camera. The camera's amazing, but thought protection, if you're out there living that slime ball life, <laughs> the, the scuzz bucket life, you're gonna want that phone. All right, shout out to everybody in the creep squad. All right, so what's that? Where we at? That's number six? All right, that's number seven. All right, let's take it over to number eight. Number eight. Number eight, I'm going with the Razer phone. Now, I didn't do a full review on this phone only because I didn't get around to it. I've, I've been busy at the end of the year. That's my, that's my busy time at the job. But this phone right here, this is a major heavy hitter. There's a few downsides. The camera. The camera on this phone, if you had a Galaxy Note 8 or you had an iPhone or you had a Pixel, then you got this phone, you're going to think the camera is suspect. Uh, you're not going to like the camera on this at all. Not to mention this uh, IPS display. This is one of those phones. Now, a lot of times I say you can't really tell the difference between IPS and, you know, Super AMOLED panels. It depends on how you set up your phone. This is one of those phones that you could clearly see the difference. I would have preferred the AMOLED panel, but it is what it is. Speakers on this phone. Now, would I say they're the best? I would say these are in the top two speakers. A lot of people disagree with me, and, you know, you're welcome to do that. I personally still like the iPhone speakers better. These speakers are super loud, but they just don't have that depth to it. They don't have that deep tone to it. But if you're going for strict loudness, when you get an alert on this, it will scare the shit out of you. If you're using this as an alarm, you're definitely going to be waking up. All right. Now, one thing I don't like about this phone is this build quality. Now, don't get me wrong. The build quality on this is excellent. All right. It's top notch. But this big, giant, heavy square phone. Remember when I first unboxed it, I was like, yo, this feels like a man phone. It does. But that novelty is going to wear off quick. After a while, you're going to feel like you're holding some big, outdated brick phone, especially when you pull out your other phone and it's glass back and it's, you know, shiny and thin and light. Then you got this big heavyweight right here. 
that the build on this, after a while, it's gonna start to get on your nerves. It's big and heavy. But if you're looking for that kind of build, then you're gonna like this. Now, as far as gaming, I don't really game on phones, so I can't talk about that. But what I can talk about, the smoothness. This phone is, this is another lag-free phone right here. Super smooth, which you got the 120 gigahertz, millihertz, <laughs> the trigger hertz. You got the 120 trigger hertz refresh rate. Who knows? But whatever they put in it, it works, all right? You get no lag on this phone. This is a major heavy hitter. Zerks, chill, bro. Right. <laughs> Shout out to White Shoes. He'd be scaring me. All right, where we at? Number eight. Number eight on the list. Here we go. Number eight, I'm going with the OnePlus 5T. Now, it's kind of shocking that a mid-range phone would make it into my top 10, but even though this is a mid-range phone as far as prices go, this is another performance monster right here. This phone is so smooth. <laughs> this phone is a major go. Now, of course, it doesn't have wireless charging. It's not water resistant. There's no expandable memory, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things we could gripe about if we want, but strictly just for performance wise. Oh, and the facial unlock, Zerks, I'm gonna have to file you to the side in a second. The facial unlock on this is probably the fastest in the market. Now I got on this big winter hat, so it's not working right now, but this is a go. Look wise, now we're going with the white version. Look wise, look at this. This is a beautiful phone, but it's lag free. All right, lag free. Now, when I did the unboxing, I told y'all, if you're looking for a backup phone, there's no reason to have two Galaxy phones. If you got a Galaxy Note 8, don't go out and get a Galaxy S7 or a Galaxy S8. That doesn't make sense. You're cutting yourself short. So if you already got an iPhone and you want to get into the Android game and you don't want to spend a lot of money, then you want to rock with the OnePlus 5T. All right, T stand for trouble. OnePlus 5T, 560 bucks to get you this one right here. You right here chilling in the top 10. I gotta drop this case back on. This is a go. All right, now, number 10 on the list. Number 10 on the list. Number 10 on the list, I'm going with the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, although I like the iPhone 10 because it has a better display, I miss the fingerprint sensor, so that's why I'm still rocking my iPhone 8 Plus. Y'all see me in the gym with this phone all of the time. This is my gym phone. All right, this is, this is a heavy, this is a, look out, Zerks. <laughs> This is a major heavy hitter right here. Now this case is mad dirty, but it is what it is. This is the second best iPhone out. Now look, internally, they both the same, the 10 and the eight. So it's up, it's up to you. If you like the wider, wider display. One thing I like about having the wider iPhone, it's easier to text. I do make a lot of mistakes when I'm texting on the 10, but it is what it is. So if you like the wider version, go with the eight plus, and you still get that fingerprint sensor on the front. All right, so the iPhone eight plus, that rounds off my top 10. Now, there's a couple of phones that, that's missing right now from the list, and let me talk about those real quick. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, hey, what happened to the Galaxies? What happened to the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, S8 Active? These phones would've easily been in my top 10, but I already got a Galaxy Note 8. If you got a Galaxy Note 8, there's no reason to be walking around with two Galaxy phones at the same time. All right, I'm trying to have the best of all of the different OSs, the best of both worlds. If I didn't have a Galaxy Note 8, then the Galaxy S8 Plus would definitely be in the top 10. All right, this is this phone ain't a slouch. I don't even use this phone like that anymore. Anybody wanna buy, anybody wanna buy any of these phones? And basically any phone that you see right here is for sale. Hit me up, all right, hit me up, they all for sale. But anyway, except for my Pixel, everything else is for sale. These are heavy hitters right here. Just like, now look, I, I hate having to keep saying this over and over, but all Galaxy phones, and I know, y'all Samsung fanboys, man, I know, I know. All Galaxy phones, they're gonna start lagging after a while. And personally, I don't think it's the phone because internally, they all got Snapdragon 835, they all got Adreno uh, 540 GPUs, they all got the same guts. Why does these phones start to lag? It's because of TouchWiz. All right, so Samsung, all right, Samsung, if y'all listening, look, we love the features, all right, we love all of the features, the gimmicks, we love all of that stuff, all right, we love all that stuff, but I'd sacrifice that stuff in a heartbeat to get a smooth Android performance, all right? You see how Pixel is doing it? You see how Razer and OnePlus HTC is doing it? Tone down the skin. It might be it might be time for a whole refresh. Let's get rid of TouchWiz. Let's take it over to Tizen. Focus on Tizen. Let's get more of a stock-based experience. Because nine times out of 10, when people that use Galaxy phones, half of the features that's on them, they don't use. And they would definitely give those up to not have to worry about TouchWiz lag. Now. Another phone that didn't make it into my top 10, which is um, another phone that I would give an award for most improved phone of the year, LG G6. 
Now this could have easily been in the top 10, but I ran out of numbers. <laughs> but the LG G6, if you had an LG G5, then you got an LG G6, it was like getting night and day, two totally different phones. You went from that that stupid modular design that didn't, you know, didn't work right with the little buggy software. LG G6, minimum lag on this one, water resistant, wireless charge. I still use this phone every day, all right, at the end of all my videos, when I do my little, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> anyway, when I, do, I know I got lost track. When I do my little shit at the end of the video, I'm always using my LG G6. Minimum lag on this one, like a little hiccup here and there. This phone right here, it's between this and the OnePlus 5T for best $500 phone of the year. I would still go with the 5T because it's the, it has updated software. All right, so you, you're a little bit more future-proof with the 5T. This is Snapdragon 821, I believe, and you got Snapdragon 835. I know specs on paper don't matter, but it does when you're spending your money. You wanna be as future-proof as possible. This one just looks beautiful. So this didn't make the list, but LG G6, that's a heavy hitter too. Now, another phone that we gotta talk about, I know, the Essential Trash. All right, we got the Essential PH1, or as I call it, the Essential Trash. Now y'all know I'm so biased against this phone, and I'm not even ashamed to admit it, I'm so biased against this phone, but in all actuality, I'm just being a hater, but in all actuality, this phone is 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 decent. I I wouldn't say this phone is a beast and this phone is crazy and all that. If you could get this phone for four hundred bucks, buy this phone immediately. But if you like me and you paid seven hundred and fifty bucks for this, this is the essential trash. Now a lot of people will say, oh well, you know that what you pay for it doesn't affect the phone. It does. It does. Let me let me give you a perfect example of what I mean. Say you go to McDonald's, right? And you, you walk up to McDonald's and you look at the menu, they got a new sandwich. All right, it's called the Big Mac XL. And you know, you're fat ass, you hype, you like, oh, I, I gotta get that. Let me get the Big Mac XL. How much is that? And they tell you it's $10. You're gonna be like, good Lord, that's a lot of money for a Big Mac, but let me get that. I'm hungry, let me get that. Now you go out and buy that Big Mac XL for $10 and you eat it and you're like, all right, it's cool. I mean, it's not filet mignon. <laughs> I, it's not a filet mignon sandwich. I know, I'm trolling. It's not a filet mignon, but it's cool. You pay 10 bucks for it, it's cool. Now you get in your car, you're driving back and forth to work every day. The very next week, you pull up in front of that same McDonald's and they got a big sign on the window. We got the new Big Mac XL and it's $4.99. You're gonna be like, hold on a second. I just bought this shit last week for $10. Why did the price drop that fast in the space of a week? There's a couple of reasons why. Either the, either it's really trash and nobody's buying it, so they had to drop the price. Either they know that they're not gonna sell them. There's, there's something fishy going on with that situation, but the bottom line is you're gonna be mad that you just bought it for $10, now everybody else getting it for half the price. And that's how I feel with this essential trash. I, would, I wouldn't be so hard on it if they did a Samsung. All right, if they pulled a Samsung, you know how Samsung did with the Galaxy Fireball 7, the Note 7? Remember you bought your Note 7, you paid almost a thousand bucks for it, then you had to turn it in. Samsung didn't just, ha ha, all right, we got you and keep it moving. No, you got an email from Samsung. Look, uh, my bad, all right, we, we, we know we messed up, my bad. When you're ready to buy your next Samsung phone, here goes a gift certificate for $200, $300 off or whatever, that helps ease the pain. So now, if Accenture would've did that, if they would've sent me an email like, look, we know you just spent 750 for this, now two weeks later it's $400. All right, here goes a here goes a here goes a gift certificate. Here goes a voucher. Here goes anything. Here goes a here's a, here's a coupon for when the Central Two comes out. Maybe you get fifty dollars off, a hundred dollars. Give me something. They didn't say nothing. No, no nothing. They just let me take a seven hundred fifty dollar loss. Everybody else buying this phone for four hundred bucks. So I'm mad. Yeah, I'm mad about that one. All right, so for, in my opinion, this phone is trash. All right, now, but without being a hater, without being a hater, the things I do like about this phone. I like the edge to edge display, and I do like this phone because it's small, and the best part about this is the build quality. Now the worst part about it is the camera. The camera's trash. All right, they call into the central, but there's no dual speakers, no wireless charging, no headphone jack, no expandable memory. It's, there's really nothing essential about this. They should call it basic. Yeah, I remember the basic one. This phone is pretty basic, but I still use this heavy as a trap phone because it's so small and it fits right in my pocket and it has a nice build that I don't need a case on it. This is one of those phones you're not gonna wanna use a case because the build does feel great. It feels good in the hands. Ladies, you know the procedures. All right, let's, uh, what else? One more phone, I, will, I got a few more. Blackberry, all right? Now I forgot the name of this Blackberry, y'all remember this one. I, I, honestly, I forgot the name of this one off the top of my head. 
I really don't use this. I tried to use this. I, I gave it the old college try. I tried my hardest to get into this phone. But nowadays, ain't nobody, ain't nobody type typing like this with the physical keys. Nobody. Now, even though you can swipe, you know, you can use this to swipe keys and all of that. But if I'm going to be swiping, why the hell am I using this phone? Why don't I get a big edge to edge phone? Why am I going to be swiping? If I'm going to be swiping like this, I can swipe with a full screen. And then when I want to watch videos, flip it in landscape and got a full screen instead of having a little, you know, half a display like this one. I tried. Now, look, if, you, if you're using this as a business phone and you're looking for security and all of that, all right, whatever, do you. I can understand that. There is reasons to buy this. But for me, I don't really care about that much security with the emails and all of that. So this phone ain't really my cup of tea. It is what it is. It's a cool phone, but it's a no for me, dog. Now, speaking of trap phones, <laughs> let me show you my favorite trap phone. Now, I do got two other ones that I use just for fun, just for throwaways. I got these uh, Umi Digi, the S2 and the S2 Pro. These are some quality trap phones, but they lag like crazy after a while. If you try to go, if you try to go beast mode on these phones and you got 10 apps open at the same time and you're trying to use this, like if it's one of your heavy hitters, you're going to be in for a long night. I use this phone for what it is, trap phone status, have your Instagram on it, have a Twitter, and keep it moving. I take some pictures, follow them to your secure folder, anything happen, throw this phone out the window, keep it moving. But my favorite trap phone right now would be the Moto E4. This is my, this is my go-to trap phone right here. Let me see if I got any juice on this one. Yeah, this one is still powered up. This one right here, I would say minimum lag, minimum lag. This one actually works kind of like the Z, the, like the original Z. The camera on this, eh, it, it gets the job done. It is what it is. But if you're looking for a trap phone, phone with basically no lag, all day battery. The battery on this phone is crazy. The standby time, you see, look how much, now I haven't charged this phone probably in like maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe four or five days. No charge in four or five days. Still got a little bit of battery left. This is my trap phone deluxe, not to mention it just looks nice. So when I'm trapping and I pull out this phone, at least I still look a little bit nice. It is what it is. So anyway, these are my top 10 phones as of January, what, January says the 6th? As of January 6th, 2018, these are my top 10 phones. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if y'all want to talk about anything. And when I'm doing my live stream tomorrow, if y'all want to debate, then we can get into it. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad, I'll see y'all in the comment section early, hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing, I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me, all y'all haters, all y'all trolls. Close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock won the beam up. Energize. Yo, what's up everybody, it's your boy Floss, back again with another video, and today I'm going to show you my top 10 phones in order. Shout out to White Shoes, just scared the shit out of me.